In this video, I'm gonna show you a handful of what I think are very underrated plugins for mastering, while well, you can also mix with them. Let's take a look. Hello everyone, welcome back to MixFest TV. Hope you're having a great day before we start. Please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on Pro Mix Academy, free plugins, special discounts and offers, and of course, links to the plugins that we are gonna see today. And if you're enjoying the content, please consider using the super thanks and support the channel. And if you really wanna learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a MixFest TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses, start to finish, mastering courses on many different genres and a lot more. Let's get to the video. I have three songs here that I master at different times, three different artists, three different genres. We're just gonna use this as an example. The first one is Mishio, it's called Magic, it is this one. Smiling with your teeth, you weren't in your head yet. It was only Simpsons. Then we have Mastacuba. Really cool song, by the way. I mastered their entire album. It's a really cool project you should check out. And then we're gonna use Peacock and Madsen, Adrenalians. Alright, let's start with the first one. Let's start with Master Kuba. Because the first plugin that I'm gonna show you by Mac DSP is called Analog Channel. And we have Analog Channel 1 and Analog Channel 2. And I wanna focus in particular on Analog Channel 2 because years ago I made a video on what plugins I would use if, for example, I didn't have my two bus analog gear, okay? My two bus changed a lot, but one thing that I've had for a long time is my Neve 542s. And in that video, I kinda of let the cat out of the bag and I said I actually had to mix a couple of songs in my hotel room at the time, and MacDSP Analog Channel 2 was the closest thing that I could find to my Neve 542's uh, tape emulator. At least for the low end bump and curves that that piece of hardware give me, this is still a plugin that sounds amazing. And I love it on the full mix, but you can use it on single tracks as well. You have input and output, and then the roll off and bump section. This is where the money is for me in this plugin. And then we have the bias, the release, and then three types of speed IPS from the darkest to the brightest, 7.5, 50, and 30, and then two EQ types, and then vintage and modern for the tape options. This last one changes dramatically the effect of this plugin. For mastering purposes, I suggest using modern because of course it's the one that is a little more linear. And you will see this plugin gives you the natural type of compression the tapes gives you and with vintage engaged is a lot more obvious, okay? So for mastering, I prefer modern and for example, 30 IPS. Usually you can go up to 15, but let's start playing with it. This was a good mix, Mastakuba. The entire album has this old school hip hop vibe, very retro sounding, but I feel like it could benefit from a little more modern, solid and deep low end and a little less brightness at the top just to go with the retro vibe. This is the perfect plugin for this. So we have five different machines emulated because every tape machine gives you a different bump and roll off, okay? So we have five different models and it gives you the old school trick of cutting what's not needed. So right below, in my opinion for this, the lowest usable fundamental and boosting at the same time in that exact range, okay? So if we up the bump and then we roll off, you can see it's pretty self-explanatory, okay? That's the key, is this push and pull that gives the effect, okay? So let's start with this, just with this. I'm gonna exaggerate the bump so you can hear it in, in the video. Okay, pretty obvious. The cool thing is that you have the different types of machine emulated, which if you keep your eyes on the graph, you'll see it changes, right? Right now we have the Japan O and you have a roll off, then a boost, and then a cut right after. So above in the frequency range, our roll off frequency. Here we go, we don't stop, and it's done, I get soft, check you clock, I get gold, we'll hip hop, 
represent the real Okay, so I'm exaggerating the settings right now, but you can see and hear the difference. Uh, the Japan T, which is one of my favorite for this, you have the roll off, the first bump, and then a little dip in here, and then another slight bump. This is one of my favorite, and the roll off frequency, the corner frequencies is everything, especially on a full mix. You definitely can hear by sweeping the roll off knob where the energy is. I really like this section of this plugin so much. USA A, uh, which you can figure out what model is it, is also one of my favorite. I tend to like this kind of uh, roll off, bump, and then dip. I mean, it's a well known, proven to work curve, right? To, to make the low end feel deeper and kind of eliminating that sometimes low mid range, which can be too much. So this is the first section of the plugin. And then we have the natural compression slash color part of the plugin. So let's see what happens when I start pushing the bias here. Okay, in this case, you need to pay attention to the higher range because it's easier to hear what's happening, okay? You can hear there's this natural glue that kind of get rid of those sometimes too piercing sounds and too peaky sounds on the top end. And for my taste, I like to keep the release pretty fast on this because even at its fastest, it's still 10 milliseconds. And then of course we have the change in tone with the speed. I like IEC2, for example, usually for mastering. And then I'll show you if you go to vintage with the same settings, the compression is a lot more. Okay, so now you understand why I usually prefer modern for, for mastering at least. Let's go to the next two one is Retro EQ from the Retro series of Mac DSP. Again, I feel this plugin is so underrated and I absolutely love the top end, probably one of the best top end in the plugin world. And I'm gonna show you in a second. And the next one, we are gonna use it in combination with the AE400, which is their active equalizer for this particular mix, because this particular mix has the bass, which is a little boomy at times. So let's hear it without. Okay, if we take this node here, you will hear what I mean. Okay, that note right there, which happens to be around 127. We're gonna put this to zero and with this, When you work on a mix and you don't have access to the mix, right? You're mastering and there's a bass that is like that. So sometimes there are some notes that just pop out too much. Depending on the dynamics and many other things, there's two approaches at least, there's probably 2000. But <laughs> in both cases, you wanna keep your attack slow because you don't want the EQ to interfere with the kick drum, which is probably gonna be right there with the bass, okay? The kick is a fast transient, it's a fast audio event, right? very quick and goes away. The bass is a long audio event that is always there. And even if one note pops up, it's not as instantaneous as a transient, okay? As a percussion, like the kick drum. So you're still gonna catch that note, even with, with a slow attack. The release, of course, is your ear. You kind of have to feel the groove, all right? And then you kind of have two approaches. If it's just few notes, you can keep the ratio higher 
and just with the threshold try to grab just those two three notes or if it's the entire range the area right that is kind of constantly coming and going and being a little too much and then okay and then a little too much you can approach it differently keeping the ratio really low but always keeping that range under the curve of the dynamic eq I Okay, especially that one note right there. With it. It is grabbing a lot, even if I have my ratio really low. And now once you took care of this, you can re-inject a little bit of energy in that low range. And again, using the retro EQ, which I really, really like. I listen to that top end like seriously <laughs> very few plug-in equalizer sounds like this on the top end I'm actually removing the low end so you can concentrate just on the top end the low end is really big but it's really retro on this so it might not be the ticket for every song but when you want a really round and deep low end that's the one you want i would also now that i hear this um there's something in the probably 500 range let me see if i can catch it it's more like 200 um that is kind of a little wooly all right so still i wouldn't want to remove it with a static eq It cleans that area a little bit. So these two are two really cool plugins, a really killer combination for surgical and fixing whatever problem you have, and then like a sweetening EQ to put after. The last two I'm gonna show you are two quote unquote dangerous plugins because <laughs> you can do a lot of damage if you are not careful with it. One is the ML4 and the other one is the ML8000 advanced limiter, okay? In the ML4, we have a full multiband compression section actually multiband dynamics because we have for each band you can see gate expander and compression right with attack and release you know you can change the crossover and everything and then we have have the mastering limiter section after it so when you need that combination this is it let's grab this range here let's see Okay, we can remove a little bit of this. Again, paying attention not to take away the energy from the kick, which is also in that range. I really want the attack slow. And let's hear the, the really low end here. Which is very controlled. I don't feel like I should do anything to it, but just to show you the plugin, all right? What you could do if you had 
too much sub range, okay? All right, let's see. I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit. And we are able to gain a little bit of energy down there because we are tightening up and then compensating for the compression. And watch the release. If it's too fast in the really low range, it could start stuttering and creating distortion. In this case, this processor doesn't, and it sounds great. And then we have the mastering limiter section here, which has different modes, clean, soft, smart, dynamic, loud, and crush. So let's lower the ceiling right now to 4 dB. Let's start with 4 dB. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is the clean mode, but I want to try dynamic for this mix. I'm just gonna test the limit of this, all right? And it's gonna sound bad because I'm gonna do way too much limiting, but this is also how you test, okay? And we're gonna change the modes and try to hear the difference. When I'm showing up, showing up that me like at Dean, I'm that me. That beats a beat the debt with the debt sheep, cold feet, like cop killers me. You hear the crush definitely adds some color, some grit to it. So the modes are really, really useful depending on the material. And again, I'm just doing way too much gain reduction right now. I'm gonna back off a little bit, but it's just so you can hear the difference. I love and loud and dynamic for material like this. And even if this is not gonna be your last limiting stage, the combination of the multiband dynamic and the mastering limiter, uh, it's very useful. Even if you just wanna start shaving off like the first dB at the limiting stage and then follow up with something else. The ML8000 is an even more advanced mastering limiter in this case if you have very complex material. The cool thing on this one, other than the insane amount of control that you have with eight bands, all independent, is that you have a master section with the threshold ceiling near release, just like for the previous one, with all the same modes. And then you have the modes for the multiband section, okay? You can see clean, soft, smart, and also fixed variable one and variable two settings for the release. For example, if you wanna push something a little harder and you have like a lot of low end, you can try to split the difference between the master limiting section and the multiband. So you don't leave all the load and all the heavy lifting to the final wideband limiter. I'm just gonna do that and then go like again around five minus five here. And you can compensate, of course, for the reduction and everything. One trick that I like with this one, you can see for each slider you have M, L, other than solo, and the auditioning button. This stands for master and the L stands for linked. So right now, band number five is my master. If I pull the threshold down of my master, all the other thresholds are linked. So if you like the balance of your mix and you want to even just see which frequency starts to hit the threshold first, this is a cool trick to use. Okay, 
case is this range here, band number two, that hits first because that's where the kick and the bass are, which doesn't necessarily mean you have to hit that one first. Actually, you could do the opposite. You can see which one hits the limiter first and then back off if you don't want to hit it as hard as the rest. Okay, this way now you start seeing band number two, number five, and number six kind of dance around, okay? So this is just to scratch the surface of what you can do with these plugins. They're really, really great tools, all the ones that we've seen in this video. So definitely check them out. The links are gonna be in the info box down below. I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Support the channel, user super thanks. If you like the comment, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Hands on my